We're going to talk about working effectively with non-data stakeholders today and I've broken this down into five points and actually looking at five distinct areas within, within a typical business. So if we start with the development teams, quite often in data functions, the development teams sit outside the data functions and might even be managing your data pipeline. So it's really, really important um, to engage with those development teams and explain to them the impacts of what they do and how they work. You know, a good example is uh, developers very often dual purpose fields and they say, you know, in one case you can put a phone number in there, in one case you could put an email address in there. And from a, from a, a development functionality perspective, that doesn't really matter. It really does matter from a data perspective and it makes your work at the end of the data pipeline much more complicated. So spend a bit of time talking to them, explain to them, bring some examples, and hopefully they'll come on board and understand that their shortcuts uh, cause you a, a great deal of pain. The second area, and in some ways it's related, are the digital product, product teams. So an awful lot of work will be going on in the digital space, particularly in this uh, COVID period, as people try to adapt products to work in new ways, in ways they were, perhaps weren't designed for. Now, one of the things that is often missed in product development is that data isn't just a, um, a, a sort of collateral benefit. Often it is the key purpose of the product. Data is integral to the product. So your, your digital teams might be very, very focused on features and thinking about you know, how the digital journey might look to the end user. You want to help educate them again on how the data journey needs to look, particularly when you want to use that data at the end of the process. So for instance, if you're capturing information about people or not capturing information about people, and that's the real key one that, that digital products often miss. They don't capture things that actually they do know during the journey, but they don't bother to store them. So something to think about. Um, another area is marketing. And we're seeing huge efforts now of people trying to reach new audiences through new channels. And, and, and that's, that's complex, and that's probably really difficult for some of the marketing teams. So as data professionals, we should engage proactively with the marketing teams, ask them about the difficulties they're having, offer support, and also come with some new ideas. Um, one of the things that uh, I often notice is that data teams will sit quietly with huge amounts of insight and won't proactively share them with, with, with other people in the business. So now's a real time to just engage and say, look, we've noticed that, or have you thought about this, or have you considered this? And draw on, on your own anecdotal experience of using um, digital um, and marketing uh, systems. The fourth area I think about is your report users. And we've got a bit of a luxury of time at the moment, time to have slightly longer and deeper conversations with people. So work with the people who consume your, your reports. Now they're quite often not data savvy people and they'll just accept what you give them. You give them a report and they'll take it. It's really worthwhile engaging with them and, and, and looking at it almost as a storyboard and saying, when you look at this report, what do you see? What do you understand? What story does this tell you? What do you do with the information that you've taken from this report? How do you take it forward? And actually engaging with them in that conversation could be really, really fruitful. You might actually find one that the report is actually very little value to them, or actually they're not really understanding what, what the report is telling them, or even more, they're not um, exploiting the full potential of that report. So spend a bit of time around there. And then the fifth area I'd look at is security and compliance. One of the key things in working effectively with non-data stakeholders is making them your friends and security and compliance are there to protect the enterprise to make sure that the enterprise doesn't fall foul of, 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 of law and regulation and also to protect the consumer the person who is who is who is sharing data with you, you become the custodian of their data so rather than review, uh, viewing these people as foes or, or blockers uh, engage with them explain to them what you're trying to do, work with them and ask them how they can help you do what you're trying to do. So I think to sort of summarize in all of the, these five areas, it's about breaking down adversarial relationships and actually turning them into collaborative relationships where, where both parts of the, the, the data proposition understand their role, understand how they can help, and equally important, understand how they might inadvertently hinder.